What is up guys? Welcome back to Pat Outdoors. Hope you're having a great weekend. So after a couple hours of sleep and some time to think it over, it's now time to install this Conray brushless motor kit on my Razor. So let's go take this thing apart. Now that we got the factory motor out and the fast scooters kit off, it's time to start installing the Conray kit. By the way, I still don't know if I'm saying that correctly, so please correct me if I'm wrong. So this is the general area where I'm thinking of mounting the controller. Uh, I noticed that there's a pocket of space between these two tabs and this mounting point right here. If I cut a section of this tank out, I think there would be enough space for um, the controller as far as height goes and everything. So only one way to find out. Okay, so now I understand what one of the guys in the comments on part one video was talking about, about taking these screws out and recessing the holes. Face of the motor actually has to sit flat against the, uh, the bracket, but these two screws would be protruding and making contact with the swing arm. So we gotta take these screws out, drill the holes down a little bit, and then screw the screws back in until the uh, face of the motor is flat. So then we can slide it in there in place and put the bolts on. I'm also gonna have to cut this bracket off. Uh, it looks like it's just a weld here and a weld there. I might be able to get away with just cutting this tab, but might as well clean things up. Uh, that bracket is gonna scrape up against the tire otherwise if you don't cut it off and this other bracket's also gonna hit this portion of the swing arm if you don't cut it off I just used a four inch cutting wheel to uh, take the bracket off. Pretty easy, really. Just be patient and slowly cut through the weld and you can grind it down to clean things up. Now it's time to take these two screws off and uh, widen the openings a little bit just so we can screw these back in and have the head sunken into the plate. I'm busting out this big boy. I usually use this for car stuff, but it's all I got, so that's what we're using. You could probably get away with doing this with a drill half this size. So this is what it's gonna look like. You'll notice that the heads of the other bolts are now sunken in. Well, this one, this one can protrude because it doesn't uh, make contact with anything. So it's just these two lower bolts that may make contact with the inside of the swing arm. So the motor is now ready to install. It's definitely a snug fit, but everything lines up as it should. So let's hook up the rest of the electronics and give this a shot. 
For the phase wires, it really doesn't matter which order you hook it up as long as green goes to green, blue goes to blue, and yellow goes to yellow. At this point, all that's left for me to do is hook up the positive and negative uh, terminals to the batteries. And um, this is just a charge port plug, which is supposed to connect to the charge port on the cover, but uh, I may have to ex extend that. And before I put all the covers back on, I just wanna make sure it all works. And to make sure that I have a apples to apples fair comparison between this setup and the fast scooters kit, I'm going to reinstall the 13 tooth sprocket since my baseline is 26.8 miles an hour with the 13 tooth sprocket and the sealed lead acid batteries with the stock motor and fast scooters controller. So I didn't want to make too many changes. So I'm going to reinstall that um, to have a fair comparison. All right, let's test it out. <laughs> now that everything's actually properly hooked up. There was just enough slack to connect the charger cable um, from the controller to the cover. So let's go put the lower covers back on, tuck everything in place, and then start working on trimming the inside of the uh, fairings or the gas tank to be able to fit over the controller. So this is what my bike looks like with the lower covers on. Majority of the connectors are above the lower cover. Uh, and then the phase wires and the power wires are on the left side, still also above the lower cover, but it should still all look clean since the fairing should hopefully fit on top of it. I just temporarily placed a fairing on top just so I can show you what we need to trim and why. So you see the gas tank is actually sitting right on the controller. What I'm looking to do is take the cutting wheel and just literally carve out as much as I can in this section, just to make as much room as possible here and uh, still not have the controller exposed. So I gotta make sure I don't cut past this. So that's what the cut looks like. I got pretty close to cutting through, but luckily I didn't. The only other thing I had to do to get the fairings to sit correctly, besides cutting the inside of the gas tank, is I added this um, third of an inch spacer, to the bottom of this mounting tab, just to elevate it just enough so it doesn't put pressure on the controller or any of the wiring. The way I have everything trimmed, you still can't see any of the additional wiring that was visible earlier because it's on the inside over here. So the bike still looks clean from the outside. So with this new setup, I'm still using the Fast Scooters 55 volt charger that I was using prior with the brush kit, um, but that shouldn't 
damage anything. It still goes through the factory port, which is hooked up to the new controller. Still charging the same battery, so it's not like I'm charging a lithium battery with it. I wanna let this bike charge for at least a few hours before we take it out for a top speed run and distance test so that we can fairly compare it to the fast scooters kit. Now, if you found today's video to be helpful in any way, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you wanna keep up with my MX650 build or check out some of my other projects, consider subscribing to my channel. But this is gonna be it for today. Thank you for watching.